This video is going to be yet another look at Justin Matabike film of him at times being a dominant force against NFL offensive linemen. In the Ravens' Sunday night football win against the Jags, Ravens had one sack and four quarterback hits, at least in the two statistical services that I look, look at. And Justin Matabike had all five of those statistical designations. He had the only quarterback sack, really could have had two. I'll show you this third quarter play here first. Ridiculous statistical output this year, 12 sacks at this point. I think 10 or 11 games in a row with at least a half a sack. Uh, Justin Matabike is unbelievable at this point. Can the 49ers stop him? Uh, can they slow him down? I don't know who can. If, if he gets the opportunities that he's getting, I think he'll convert. Uh, before we get to the film, let me explain the title. When I, I was a kid. I'm, I'm old, by the way. There was this baseball show that came out every Saturday morning called This Week in Baseball. And at the time, there wasn't baseball or any sport on TV each and every night. And you certainly didn't have YouTube and other websites as you could go to and find information. That's when Sports Center became so big because they would show us the highlights. You would wake up early to watch Sports Center on the half hour so you could see the highlights again and again and again. This Week in Baseball, for those of us that were baseball fans or want to be baseball players, you could look at highlights of games. You could see uh, player interviews, etc. So the title here, This Week in Matabike's World, I, th I feel like is fitting because Matabike is doing these things to every single offense the Ravens play. We'll start the film off with this third down or third quarter hit against Trevor Lawrence. It ends up being intentional grounding. It's an unbelievably athletic move. And, and the level of commitment and physicality. I mean, his finish on stuff is unbelievable. Very easily could have been a, a sack here. He's lined up in a three technique and on the snap, he's just playing at a different level than everybody else. He's not just going to shoot the A-gap. It's the slap with the right hand to pull the, the guard's arm and bicep down however little he can to then totally destroy his posture with the rip from the other hand. Now, the right guard still gets a shot on him, but Matabike uses the center to basically ricochet off very close to having a sack there and or a safety, potentially a strip sack that JAD returns to the house. This one, I feel like, shows his explosiveness the most in short space, his get-off compared to everybody else. He has the get-off of an edge defender, a guy who's not going to be touched for a period of time as an edge defender, so they're free to get upfield, if that makes sense. The only thing is he does it from an interior defensive lineman position. Unique talent, unique player. The Ravens are getting an incredible amount of production from. Rewind in time here, first possession. This is going to be a short pass on a third and four to Travis Etienne. And this is what Justin Matabike does. He finishes plays. He makes his presence known to the quarterback. There's been... Six or eight times this year where he hits the quarterback right as or just after he gets rid of the football like this one. Lawrence ends up shoveling it, and, we, and the Ravens give up a first down. Etienne is able to get away from Patrick Queen. But if you notice, at the end of the play, Trevor Lawrence ends up where a lot of quarterbacks are this year in Justin Matabike's arms, in some cases slung to the side. Late first quarter now, I think second possession. Second and 12. Incomplete pass to Travis Etienne. Matabike again getting to the quarterback. There's an exchange stunt between him and Van Noy. And this, I feel like, is the type of play that influences the ensuing play call. It's hard for me to pause it here. You can see Matabike is hitting Trevor Lawrence. The ball is out. The rule, as it stands, the refs are interpreting the rule as you get a certain amount of steps that you can finish off before you can hit the quarterback. Matabike hasn't been called for these penalties lately. I don't pretend to know all the intricacies of the rule. I just know he's not being called for, the, for these hits. In this day and age in the NFL, it wouldn't surprise me if he does. <clears throat> Personally, I don't have a problem with him. Stunt between him and Van Noy, and this is the path that Matabike has taken to a number of quarterback pressures and sacks. Look, you have two offensive linemen with their hands in front of his chest trying to slow him up from getting to the quarterback. He's still able to power through. I mean, you could have had one 
Definitely one hold called there on the guard, if not a second one on the tackle. The ensuing play is a screen. I think there's times where Justin Matabike and the Ravens pass rush in general influences the offensive coordinator to say, hey, look, we got to get the ball out quick, and perhaps the quarterback as well. I thought Trevor Lawrence did a good job at times, especially in the first half, getting the ball out quick, recognizing the pre-snap looks by the Ravens so that he didn't have to take a hit. He could get the ball in playmaker's hands um, out in some space to try to get some yards. I also think that Matabike in our pass rush influences or encourages offensive coordinators to do that as well. This is the quarterback hit. It ends up being intentional grounding right at the one-yard line or maybe the two, I guess. Already showed you that one a couple of times. So this will be his sack, the only one that he gets statistical accreditation for. Fourth quarter, about halfway through the fourth quarter. He's up top here at the D-tackle position. We end up bringing five. Queen gets there. Van Noy is almost there. And Matabike cleans it up. It's kind of unbelievable that on the, the play that he didn't win as clean as other reps, he ends up getting the sack on. Show you the end zone angle. And the thing about Matabike, you know, he forced a fumble here too and we recovered it. He's got a violent finish to everything. Sacks, hits, chasing people down. There's a violent finish to everything that he does. A cumulative effect, if you ask me, on quarterbacks who are not prepared for his level of physicality. There's something to be said for imposing your will on people in sports, especially contact sports, obviously. And I think Justin Matabike brings that dynamic on, a, on every snap that he plays defensive end, defensive tackle, nose tackle, whatever. After forcing that fumble midway through the fourth, Ravens are able to tackle on another score. We'll go late possession here where... I feel like I have to show some of these plays where he's not winning in order for the film study to be to have any balance at all. Examples of Trevor Lawrence getting the ball out quick. This is a third and 10, about four and a half minutes left. Six-yard completion to Parker Washington, getting the ball out really fast, obviously. Creates this fourth and four, exactly four minutes left in the game. Matabike interior D-tackle position. Oway lined up outside of him. And we're not able to contain the quarterback. Oway gets upfield. Matabike kind of stems inside a little bit. Roquan is responsible for the running back. No one to go get Trevor Lawrence, who gets out of there for a 13-yard gain. Uh, again, I feel like I have to show some of these reps in order to illustrate that he doesn't win every single play. I will say this. The violence that he brings in each engagement is spectacular. He's the one up against the left guard, actually. I just squared off the left tackle. Him and the left guard going at it. Matabike can do this all game. He's playing a lot of snaps. NFL offensive linemen can do it all game as well. That's what they train for. Matabike is winning a lot of these matchups, clearly with 12 sacks, and I think 29 quarterback hits. I may have that number wrong. These last three plays will be down in the red zone or just outside the red zone, the stop that the Ravens made to finish the game. And again, we're not talking about wins. This is the brilliant play by Kyle Hamilton to just barely tip the football, which if he doesn't do, Calvin Ridley is probably going to catch this ball uh, before being ruled out of bounds. Third and 10, the ensuing play. Matabike lined up at defensive end. Give the Ravens credit for doing this, for lining him up at defensive end more often. First saw it, I thought, in the Tennessee game in week six. Brilliant close down on the ball by Marlin and knocking the ball out from Calvin Ridley. I thought I saw this the first time in week six, but then when I went back and watched Houston film, I saw it more in week one. Uh, he is getting chipped here by the running back, whether that's intentional or not because he's over there. I don't know. You know, pass pro stuff is often called based on the back, based on the Mike linebacker, not necessarily based on where your D-tackle, Justin Meek, Matabike, is, happens to be lined up at defensive end. I will leave open the possibility, though, that you know they're intentionally chipping him, but that's one of the reasons why I kind of don't pay attention to those metrics talking about defensive ends and defensive tackles being double-teamed. Pass pro is often called independent of who's lined up to either side. 
Fourth down play, low throw by Trevor Lawrence intended for Evan Ingram. A great job on defense by Brandon Stevens there. We're trying to bring a stunt. Matabike unable to get through here. Credit to the Jags' interior offensive line on this particular play. They're able to close him off because once he gets on these tracks, we're stunting Van Noy across to try to pick the guard and take the center with us so Matabike can slide into the other A-gap. The center peels off. The guard steps down, basically a three on two. Got to get somebody else winning on the outside, either Owe or Clowney, and it doesn't happen. Look, this is an unbelievable season that we're watching from Justin Matabike. For him to be doing these things on a weekly basis, and in fact, talk about this week, we only had one sack, damn near two with his efforts on this play that doesn't count as a sack, obviously. We've got to get more pressure from other guys. It can't just be Matabike who's making plays like this every week, although it seems like he can keep it up. We will need someone or some group to get pressure like this on Brock Purdy if we're going to go in there and deal with the 49ers offense in a way that stops or slows down their running game, number one, and number two, gets pressure on Purdy such that he can't be comfortable back there going through his progressions or finding quick reads. I think Trevor Lawrence early in the game had a great idea of the coverages we were running. Now, he did get a look at our defense last year and got a full 60 minutes at us. This will be the 49ers and Brock Purdy's first look at Mike McDonald's defense, at least in the NFL. I'm sure there's some guys on his team or maybe coaches who have who were around um, at Michigan or perhaps in college facing Michigan. I do think there's something to be said for quarterbacks facing this offense for the first, this defense, excuse me, for the first time in terms of all the coverage looks that Mike McDonald gives. I felt like as the second half progressed, Trevor Lawrence wasn't getting rid of the ball quick because he knew the coverage so much as he was getting the ball, getting rid of the ball quick so that the pass rush couldn't get to him. Now, that doesn't sound like an accurate statement because we only had four quarterback hits depending on the stat service you utilize. In any case, Justin Matabike was the guy on Sunday Night Football once again, and we might need him to be the guy against the 49ers on the road if we want to get a 12th win in 15 games. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of the video, the plays that I chose to break down and illustrate how unbelievable Matabike played once again. And if you enjoyed the video title at all, especially if you're my age and you remember where it came from. Appreciate you guys' time.